Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me For On YouTube channel. Ladies and gentlemen, reporting live from Salt Lake City, Utah. Dave, what are we doing this week? Uh, I think we're getting our driver's licenses. We're getting our driver's license. Not for this. We're already licensed for this. Dave and I are getting our licenses for the Black Hawk, also known as a type rating. So any helicopter over 12,500 pounds, you have to have a specific type rating on your license for. Black Hawk, well over 12,500. It can actually fly at 22,000 pounds, this particular model, which is a A plus model Black Hawk. A plus. And, and we're getting that, oh, yeah, getting that A, a plus. plus. It's got the big dog engines, the 701Ds. You can actually put 8,000 pounds on the hook of this thing, which is insane. That's uh, as much as that helicopter out there. So technically you could pick up the Dauphine with the Black Hawk if you wanted to. So I don't know, Dave, how long was it? Four or five months ago when we, had the conversation about this? Honestly, you're my you're my uh, training coordinator. I don't remember. I just <laughs> he doesn't remember even know. Text. It's like, hey, January blank, we're doing training. And I was like, all right, Father, you tell me where to be, when to be there, and all there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, basically, I hit up Dave. I was like, hey, you're the only guy I know with the Black Hawk. I mean, I don't know if I'm ever gonna have another friend with the Black Hawk. What do you say we both get trained together and I'll pay for it? You supply the helicopter. Doesn't have a Black Hawk and really doesn't have any plans to get one. He just wants to be the most well-seasoned pilot out there, just getting his type rating and everything, even though he can't fly it. Yeah, exactly. Well, can it, fly it. The beauty is I have a friend with a Black Hawk, so I mean, as long as I have a license, I'm good, right? It's just, I mean, honestly, this is like a dream come true because now he and I can go out and rip this thing yeah. all by ourselves. Which I don't know if that's good or a bad. I don't thing, know if that's good or bad. It's gonna thing. happen. <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. So this week we're doing training all week long. It's about seven days of training and then a check ride with the FAA to make sure we actually meet these standards. And today we're going flying. We're just walking her out. How's that look? I mean, guys, I don't want to brag, but I'm pretty sure I have the coolest friends ever. Dave Sparks has been so generous in uh, letting me fly his helicopters to be a part of his program. I just feel really lucky, and especially when you see a view like this, feel really lucky. Actually, when I first got into helicopters about four years ago, I remember messaging Dave on the day of my first lesson, and being like, "Dude, I, I took a lesson and." Uh, I remember when I told him I got my solo and the whole nine, and he was always super excited and supportive along the way. This is uh, probably the biggest deal of them all though. I mean, come on guys, this thing makes just shy of 4,000 horsepower. I mean, what's not to love about a freaking Blackhawk? One thing that's different about the Blackhawk, I mean, there's a lot of things that's different about the normal helicopters, but this is a crew helicopter. So no matter what, there always has to be two pilots in the helicopter and one of them has to have the Black Hawk type rating. The other one could be just a helicopter pilot without the type rating, but they do have to have some second in command training. Cause there's a lot of emergency procedures, things that can go wrong. And the primary pilot, the pilot in command, you know, is the one that's controlling the whole ship. They're the one that's in charge. They have to have that Black Hawk type rating in order to take this thing out and rip it. So we're getting some fuel right now, some Jet A, and we're on our way. So guys, as I edit this video, I realize it's pretty hard to understand this stuff if you're not familiar with a helicopter. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you my flight from my first lesson in the helicopter. This is when I knew nothing about the Black Hawk as well because you literally get in it and just start training on day one. So as we go, I'll try to explain the little things, but just watch and watch me learn at the same time. Battery switch on. All right. And that is... On power row. Power row. So it's weird because the riding is so close, but that's external power for this switch and then that's battery. battery. There you go. All right, APU boost switch on, APU control switch on. All right, I'm gonna get headset. All right. Okay, APU stands for auxiliary power unit, and it's literally a little turbine engine in the back of the Black Hawk that not only supplies power for the electronics, but it also supplies air for starting those gigantic 2,000 horsepower engines. And now you know you got it because prime boost pumps on. Yep. All right, the accumulator goes low, it should. Yep, yep. APU on. So now I do the generator. Right. So APU generator on. There we go. Fire detection test switch position one. So I think I saw that right here, right? Yep. Position one. So now we, we get. got T-handle and both, all three T-handles. And you also get the fire light. Got the fire light. Okay, got the start light. Oh. 
NG spooling up. 23. The idle. All right, now we'll wait for lineup. Starter light's still on, so we're good. There it goes. There Sometimes she Sometimes during the startup, the trim and FPS fail because the hydraulics are spooling up. I yeah. power on, reset it. Peaked at 603. Start light did go away between the 52 and 65. Oh. We've got transmission. Oil pressure coming on. Cover traffic Blades are obviously spinning. spinning. The north of the yep. field. We got, got our engine oil pressure. Yeah. Our Pressure's going. Cover. And the start light's out. All right. So we got a good start. Yes, sir. Starter number two. I got the light. NG's rising. Waiting for 23%. There it is. Tidal. All right. Start the clock. There we go. She's lit. Temp's coming up. We got oil pressure. All right. About to lose the start light. There it, there goes. it goes. Now the peak on the TGT was 628. So we're not engine on power. Oh. So PCLs to fly. Yep. Groups jobs check out. Ready? Oh, yeah. So I do have to pull them out now, right? Yep. Okay. Pull it down. You want to keep the torque under a certain number on run up? No, it doesn't really matter. I just kind of restrict it so it doesn't go too fast, but I also don't go too slow. But it's not like a 206 where you got to keep it below 40. Yeah. Groups are out. I'm going full down on the collective. And then when I get to the top, I do them individually one by one to make sure they lock into fly. Locked. Locked. Number one and two engine cautions are out. The generators, the yep. Yeah, generators, uh, percent one and two torque match within 5%, they do. Yeah, I'll probably actually peel off to the left here and then go join on the downwind. Okay, You're Sounds good, good with that. Yeah. You're on checklist duty. I'm on checklist, I like it. So before takeoff, remember this is the scripted part. Yep. Before we take off, two to fly. Systems are good. Avionics are set. Yes, we are. Crew. No passengers, I'm, I'm secure. I'm ready. Until we'll fall. That'll be on landing. So before landing check, which is best done on the downwind, tailwheels locked, park brakes release. Now do we want to release the park brake now? We do. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead and brakes. There you go. I might be a little more timid. I don't have as much time in this bad girl. All good, man. That's what I'm here for. I got a couple hours in here. Yeah, that's what I hear. I do a left turn. Watch that, tail's clear. Wow, this I'm thing has a lot of horsepower. Heat. This heat nice. Alright. Downwind, so before landing check, tail wheels locked. Tail wheel Park locked. release. Park break off. Through and pastures. Remember to clear left, clear right, all that good stuff. Alright, clear left. Go right. left. I want to just do a normal okay. approach to the ground. Skybark, uh, Blackhawk 1, Whiskey Tango, turn up base 1-7, Skybark. Okay, so we're just doing a normal approach to a landing? Yep. Alright, I'm going to use the very front of the runway just because there's the least amount of Sounds good. stuff around there to blow away. Alright. So really, you can make this whole approach with your feet off the pedals because it'll auto-yaw for you, right? Pretty much. That's and a that's, cheat code, huh? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, is this thing does so many things for you that it just takes the load off. It's I'm flying a school bus right now. Yeah, man. right. It's crazy. Pretty Probably. wicked. This thing's so smooth, too. Yeah. This is a pretty good running bird, too. I thought that were kind of crappy, but this one's this one does real well. All right, so how about we shoot for the numbers? Sounds good. Ish. Sound good. Oh, Blackhawk. <laughs> and just put it on, right? No goofing around with trying yeah. to set it down perfectly. Well, you know, within reason. Oh, my tail is already on the ground. Yeah, there you go. I didn't realize. That's pretty good. Yeah, the tail is always going to hit first. All right, back up. For takeoff. Two to fly. Oh, two to fly. Systems. Systems check. Avionics. Avionics. Crew secure. Crew.
Sky Skypark, uh, Blackhawk 1, Whiskey Tango is on the go, runway 17, left traffic, Skypark. Well, dang, that felt pretty good through there. Like that, huh? Do a roll on this time. Okay. I didn't even know the tail was on the ground. <laughs> that means it's a pretty good landing. I, well, I just, that thing's got that suspension back there. I'm like, wait a second. Yeah. The tail's on the ground. Yeah, I definitely like that more skidded aircraft. I know I do. Yeah, Sky Park 1, Whiskey Tango, Blackhawk is on the downwind 17, Sky Park. Simulated number two engine failure. Oh, brother. Well, ah, here we go. So number two is out. That I really didn't have to do anything. It's still flying. So what do All you right, do? Get the checklist out, brother. You got it. Sim says uh, single engine airspeed. Yep. You're already pretty there. Much there. Stores, if we had them, jettison. We don't have any. If continued throw flight, the passengers out. Yeah, throw the passengers out. If continued flight is possible, we'll land as soon as practicable. Yep. If it was not possible, obviously we got to land as soon yeah. as possible where we can. But we're going to do a roll on for this one. Okay. So downwind before landing check, and this one is extremely important. Tail is locked. Park brakes confirmed release. Yep. Because we're going to roll. Yep. And crew passengers. Yeah, if we landed with the park brake on the tires and everything else would be Yeah, the brakes come apart and, you know, it's a bad day. I've seen guys do it. It sucks. What's the max ground speed we can roll on? 60. All right. We we're going to, as a technique, for 40. we're going to shoot for 40. I'll call you below 60 by the GPS. Roger. We're below 60 knots. Okay. Forty-five knots look good. Forty, and then you just nose over a little bit because Blackhawk always comes in in a decelerative attitude. Now we're just landing like an airplane. Like a true <laughs> prodigy. <laughs> Number two engines coming back to fly. And if you lower the collective too fast, the rotor disc tilts because the mechanical mixing unit it punches us off to the right, so you just control it with pedals. You have a little pedal authority even when the tailwheel's locked. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it kind of slides it a little bit. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. It kind of slows down our own. You really don't have to apply a lot of brakes. You know? Yeah, not too much. You know, it's not horrible. Okay. All right. Two to fly. Systems check, ABI is clear, crew's good. Yeah, the controls. My controls. All right. Do an auto rotation. Auto rotation coming up. So we're going to want 1,000 feet on the radar altimeter. At 300 feet, if you're in all the right conditions, I'll say 300 feet continue. At 150 feet, we're going to decel. I'll call decel. Okay. And we're not going to go below 50 feet on the radar altimeter. We got a long runway anyway. And our goal is to be at 80 knots on the descent. No, no slower than 80. Okay. So where you're at is good. We just don't want to go slower. You're probably good there. We're clear below. Auto rotate. Auto rotate. No half cyclic. There you go. That's it. See with that forward cyclic, it keeps the rotor a little lower. So now as it goes down, collect it full down again. Trim. Looking good. Doing your thing. Look good. 300 feet continue. 150 D cell. I'm pulling that collective. Forty-six feet. Not bad. All right. Not bad. That was good. I was happy with that. Uh, I think you controlled it well. That's actually good when I don't have to do forty autos with guys. Some guys don't get it. Uh, it takes them longer, just depending on what they've flown. Yeah. I've got a simulated number two NP fails low, decreasing RPMR number two engine. I know my first steps to single engine airspeed it. Okay. <laughs> Wasted no time. And I'm going to tell you why I like that when we're done with this. Most guys, when I'm training them, they don't typically react very quickly or they're unsure. And before I even get the words out of my mouth, you're going into lockout. The lockout is one of those things that is such a big deal yeah, you that can't you afford to have to, to react immediately. 
So the fact that you're thinking that far ahead of it, I've actually come out of Afghanistan from a hot refuel, fully loaded with munitions, and had an MP low side failure. And if we had not reacted quickly, we would have ended up coming down and crashing into the ground. So it's nice to see that you're that far ahead of the aircraft or in understanding that you're ready to do that. So I was that was trying good. to keep his bird flying, yeah. That was good, man. Of all the students I've ever trained, I've never seen anybody react that quickly. I'm, like, I'm, I'm serious. That was <laughs> actually, that makes my heart happy. Oh, well, I'm good. Uh, I'm glad that I could uh, be on top of it. And I always try to tell them, hey, man, I understand, get to the checklist, but that's why you need to have that step memorized because it's a right now action when it really happens. Yeah. Yeah, if you droop that rotor, I mean, you're in trouble. Yep. You have to bear with me with this. Stunt I want to do. Okay. I think I told you yesterday with yeah, the yeah, wheelie yeah. thing. Yeah. And then I'm gonna send Dave a video later and say, "Hey, bro, I wheelied your black hawk." <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Um, I can take the controls. Yeah, the controls. All right, the controls. And the wheelie, there's good practicality to it too. Some guys train when you're on a roll-on landing, doing that where you're holding it on the tail and doing a deceleration that way. There it is. Nailed it, that'll be a good shot. <laughs> we did it, that, that was, was sick. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys, just got done with my first lesson. I gotta say, it is just like the most insane thing in the world, flying this thing. I have done a lot of cool things. I've been very lucky to do a lot of cool things. I haven't been this excited about something in a while. Like, this thing is absolutely incredible. I don't know how to even put it into words. This helicopter, it's got to be the coolest thing I've ever operated. I don't think there's anything else that's really even that close either. So guys, our next week consisted of a lot of ground school, flying, more ground school, more flying, more ground school, and more flying until we had to head to Idaho Falls to take our check ride in a restricted helicopter. All right, so guys, this is the helicopter that we're taking our check ride in because Dave's helicopter is experimental. You have to use a restricted category Blackhawk. So check this unit out. Dave, this paint job, dude. <laughs> it looks good. It's got me thinking about color on mine. I know, I know, you might have to. So kit helicopters up here in Idaho Falls. Yeah. That's where we're at? Mud Lake Idaho. Yeah. All right, dude, it's exam day. It is exam You're up day. first, good luck. Go. <laughs> All right, so this is the moment I took off with the FAA DPE or designated pilot examiner. On this flight, I have to do all the maneuvers I did in my training, show them I can handle the emergency procedures and fly the Black Hawk proficiently. What just happened? We just passed our check. We both passed. <laughs> both passed. Yeah, and Joe, our and buddy's doing it with us. really even no hiccups. Yeah. I mean, we killed it. Let's be honest. We killed it. We crushed it. All right, so guys, we just passed Black Hawk exam. Flying went good. We did our oral exams. We did our flying today. Passed with flying colors. We're dialed 100%. So, hey, thanks for letting us use your helicopter all week. Setting it up, dude. Yeah, dude. Worked out good. Finally got it done. Finally, dude. Just a year and a half late. Yeah, <laughs> just a year and a half late. <laughs> and also a big thank you to Kit Helicopters for letting us use this big Black Hawk. It's a nice Honestly, Kit Helicopters, Caden, Dane, the whole team up here, like world-class operation. Yeah, they really hooked it up. So, and what a cool looking helicopter. All right, guys, I am uh, super excited about this. I don't really know why I needed this, but you know, <laughs> I didn't. But I hit up Dave to make it happen because what other opportunity would present itself? Such a cool thing to do. So we made it happen, we studied, we did the class. A whole week we've been doing this, so We're going hard. it's been awesome, but it's been really I cool. This much yeah, we had to really make it happen. It was a little stressful this morning when we were all getting here to get set up. So, and uh, while like Dave was out flying, we're all just sitting there like hope he does good and the whole nine. A lot of fun, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching, Dude for Dale. We'll freaking see you later.